again, everyone. This is Kaz Bielen, and you're watching Casual Conversations, a very special program where we talk to people who are very important to our world and in our world. And today we have a business advocate, a speaker, a presenter, client support person. I mean, he's got so many titles. I don't know what to do with this guy, but we, we've got some time for him to tell us. So his special guest today is Joey Himmelfarb. Joey, good day. Good day, Kaz. It's Thank always you. a good day, right? Always a good day. Thank you. That's right. Like we did a, a prior episode about a uh, good day, happiness, how to make uh, turn your life sort of outlook around. And uh, we'll put a link above and below and you'll see that. But uh, don't do that now until after you watch this episode about business. And Joey, uh, just briefly tell us about, uh, in case people missed it, uh, your um, how you got into what you're doing right now. So way back when, when I was working for a pretty large company, I got laid off, was sent to an outplacement organization. And when I was done there, they said, you should go to this networking group uh, and they'll teach you a certain co couple things about networking, which I didn't know at the time. And so I went and what they do is you sit in this room and every week they traipse in these speakers and they teach you how to write resumes, how to research companies, how to write, uh, how, to, how to dress for an interview, right? Just technical type stuff. So I'm in these meetings week after week after week, and the people around me were becoming friends. And all of a sudden, I'm noticing that people I'm with are not happy. Uh, they're upset. They're, some of them are like downright despondent, right? Uh, some of them have been, been out of work for two weeks. Some of them two months. Some of them two years, Cass. And uh, I said to them, I said, you know what? You're not doing a good – you're not you, – you can't be this way if you're trying to look for work, right? I said, and I'm not clairvoyant, but a year from now – if you maintain this attitude, you're going to be still here because no one's going to hire you. You're not doing a good job of selling yourselves. And when I said that, I thought, you know what? I love to sell because I've been in sales at the time and I love to present. And let me be one of these presenters. So I called up the moderator the next day, presented this idea of me telling or teaching people what I've learned about selling and how you can translate it to the job market, to people looking for work. And they said, okay, come make the presentation. I thought I'd do that once or twice. 17 years later, I'm still making this presentation wow. and helping people do that. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's fun and exciting. And it's I'm always willing to help people and, and guide them along and, and try to convince them that when they're looking for work, they're selling themselves. And they need to understand that there's certain tips, techniques, not tricks, but just there's a science to selling. There's an art, but there's also a science. And I share this with people. And... Sure enough, at the end of the presentations, I wish we had more time to spend with you. I never thought of that. What a great idea. You know, and I've had some really good successes from people who have found jobs based on some of the things I've shared with them, which is it's very, it's well, very fulfilling. Uh, uh, Joey, uh, today's times is a little bit different because in the old days, I remember used to have to go and meet in front of a personnel person or a person who wants to hire you or uh, you need to sell to in person, schedule an appointment. But these days they're doing what we're doing right now, talking to each other, looking into the camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like we're looking at each other, but I don't think we are. <laughs> but the you know, technology allows us to do that. Right. You know, um, phone call, I guess you can do. And that's a whole different conversation because you have to have a certain way you sound on the phone because um, people can't see you. So they have, you know, but so, so how would you do that? Let me go maybe briefly in each one and say, how do you sell yourself in each medium? Start with uh, in person, I guess. It, 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 it doesn't matter what the medium is, Cass. It's, it's not about you. That's the irony of selling yourself. It doesn't matter what the medium is, and it, that's not about you. It's about what do you mean it's not about me? It's the show is them. about me. No, it's not. That's why you're on the show. Sorry, buddy. It's about them. It's about the Oh, no. Them, right? What am I going to do? You, you, now you made me unhappy. Right. You were Mr. Happy the last episode. Now you made me seriously unhappy. You, you, you just keep point. talking, and I'll, I'll pretend I'm listening. Go ahead. You got to put the spotlight on the person you're talking to. It's all about them, right? It's how can you make their lives better, right? Um, they don't care what you're bringing. They don't care what you have. All they care about is what you can do for them. You can't do that until you demonstrate genuinely that you care about them and that you want to help them and that you can help them get from where they are to where they want to be. And uh, that what I and I don't think I don't think it matters whether you're on camera or writing a letter or on a phone. It doesn't matter. They'll hear or see or read how you feel about them based on how you present yourself. And the way you present yourself is, how can I help you? 
right? How can I help you? Yeah. It's like, where are you? Where are you now? Like, you've got to, you've got to build rapport with these people. You've got to mm -hmm. understand what they're all about. You got to figure out if they called you. Hopefully, they called you. And even if they didn't, you know, why you're in, why you're in front of them, right, at the moment, and build this this understanding of here's what I understand you have or or want, and this is where you want to be. And let me share with you some of the things that we've done. How others, you know, the feel felt found method, right? Others before you have felt the same way. Uh, I'm sorry, I, we have found, they have found that when they worked with us, this is what they've accomplished. Um, so it's just a matter of asking the right questions, delving into their psyche, if you will, maybe, maybe even getting into their head and understanding how you can help them, understanding what solution is available to them that they didn't have before or they're not even aware of. Um, you can't do that by only talking about yourself. It's not enough. It's, it's, if I'm selling pens, and you need paper, unless I ask you that, we're ships in the night, right? So I got to understand what is it that you need and what is it that you want? What do you want to, what do you want to accomplish? And I'm going to try to help you. That's my job. I'm a salesperson. I'm a problem solver, right? I want to help solve your problems, right? And if you're looking for work, that hiring manager is your client and they don't care about you. They don't care how long you've been unemployed. They don't care why you're unemployed unless, unless you embezzled funds or you shot somebody at the previous company, right? They don't care. They don't care how many bills you have. They don't care how many homes you own, how many children you have. They're not interested. What can you do for them, right? What did you do over there that you can do over here? That's when you start talking about yourself. But you don't get there until you build this rapport and you demonstrate to them genuinely that you really care about what you can do for them. And then, now you're on stage, right? But it's them first. It's all about them. So uh, let's say, uh, let's for, uh, twist a little bit and you're on the other side, you know, you're the sale, um, the business, how to sell your business to somebody, uh, a customer that comes in. So how do you do it that way? Again, you know, depending on what the, depending on what the business is and depending on what the customer is, it's a, a back. it goes back to what does the customer want, right? What are they trying to accomplish? What service or product can I give them that they don't have, right? And you don't know that unless you ask questions. You got to figure, you got to ask them questions. You can't, um, you know, unless you're clairvoyant, most people aren't. You got to ask them questions. Why are you here? What do you need? Why do you need it now? Right? How much are you willing to spend? Right? There's so many questions. Again, it's, it's, there's, there's, no, there's no cookie cutter answer per se, mm -hmm. other than let's figure out what you want to accomplish and let's see if I have the wherewithal to help get you there. If I do, here we go. And if I don't, I may know somebody who can help you. And that's not a bad thing either. If I can help you, I'd love to. I'd love it to come from me. But if you're coming to me for expert advice, I don't have the answer. It behooves me, and I have an obligation to tell you. If you go down the street, down the block, or across the country, there's there's a solution for you there. We build a relationship. Maybe you'll come back. I don't know. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bamboozle you. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to make something up. If I can't help you, I'll let you know. But if I can, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, but it also comes to, you know, you, after a while when you get to know them, you become either somewhat their friend or a, someone who's there to help them. And also you, you have to educate them in a certain point. They're buying something like a pool, let's say, right. uh, which I know you used to do in the past. You, you have to tell them to make the right decision that they're, happy again with the decision they've made because that's the worst thing you spend a lot of money on a product like that and then you're not happy you might just blame the salesperson because they just didn't tell you well, they will blame the salesperson of course they will <laughs> <laughs> should it be right you know sales 101 right you have to have positive attitude right give them a positive attitude check your ego at the door if you want to be in sales check your ego at the door because it's going to get destroyed um yep. Okay, you know what? You, your job as a salesperson is to share with them the pros and the cons of all the decisions they can make. You can cover as much as you possibly can. You may forget something. You may leave something out. You don't do it on purpose, but you do what you can to help them make. You become their trusted advisor. You become their trusted advisor. You help them out, and you do what you can, and you give them all the information they need so that they can make their decision, right? And, and, you, and you, you, know, you plan for the worst, and you hope for the best. And yeah, no matter what, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a better 
thing that you could have added, a better thing that you could have included. There's always something. What are you going to do? You can't. I mean, I can't predict the future. I don't know what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow, right? So, <laughs> it's, you know, this, you do the best you can with what you got. And and sure, people will come and people will always have something to say about what you bought, right? They'll always question, why did you do it that way? It's like, I, I, you know what? This is what I wanted at the time. This worked for me then. It's a different world now. You do what you can, but I can't. I can't do. There's only so much I can plan for, right? You got to put yeah. it in the ground, right? So, Joey, uh, again, you can reach Joey. I love that name, Joey. LinkedIn, very casual name. Yeah. <laughs> LinkedIn and contact them. And he's a public speaker, a trainer, a client advocate, as you saw. Joey, can you give me some examples of uh, obstacles you've overcome? Let's say you had a client who was really, really um, you know, tough, didn't uh, believe in you. What did you do to overcome the situation at point where they might be a really a trusted, their trusted advisor at this point, but uh, a challenging situation where you have to really work hard to to get through yeah, them? I've had a few of those. Uh, most people, most people, I I get trusting me soon because I spend a lot of time up front. I trust you. Okay, I appreciate that. But I spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time up front, literally foiling the soil, if you will, right, and and and, and building trust in this relationship, building a relationship so that they feel comfortable with the things I share with them. Uh, it doesn't always work that way. They will challenge me on price or availability or features, whatever the case may be. It's a matter of having a conversation like we're having right now, Cass. Yeah. It's asking them. What makes you think that? Why do you feel that way? I'm curious where that came from, right? Just to get underneath and figure out, you know, the proverbial ask, the, ask why, right? The five whys. Keep asking why, 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 right? And eventually you'll come up with an answer. And if it's something that I can address, I'll address. And if I can't, i got to go somewhere else, right? Uh, I, learned, I learned in sales 101, don't, how do they say? They said, we don't care if you win something. You want to deal without asking anybody, that's great, okay? You save us time, money, and effort. Don't lose anything without making a phone call or knocking on a door or asking for help. So I I may have lost things, but I didn't lose them by myself. I always brought in the big guns. I brought in my colleagues. I brought in experts. I brought in people who, were, who did stuff before me, who knew stuff before me, trying to help the clients. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. I'm not perfect, right? But... I always went to sleep at night knowing I did my best trying to help my clients. That's all I can do, Cass. That's the best I can do is help them out and get them where they are to where they want to be. That's so, an example? That's what I asked you, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was working with a client. I mean, we had a, this was a multi-million dollar project opportunity we were working on. And they kept getting pushback from my competitor saying, they can't do this. They can't do that. So they presented me with an email with 20, 10 questions, right? And that I couldn't answer if my life depended upon me, but I knew people that could. So I sent that list to the, to the big shots and I said, here's what's holding us back. Here's what's holding the client back from making this multi-million dollar purchase. Within three hours, I had all those answers, questions, all those questions answered, present, had got everybody on the phone, made, yeah. organized a quick phone call had all the sites together, and at the end of the day, we had the order, a multi-million dollar order, because I didn't want to lose this opportunity on my own. I reached out and got help, and I think the customer appreciated that. They said, Joe, you're like my quarterback. You're like, you know what to do with me. You know you know when to hold on to me, and you know when to hand me off. And I was like, okay, I'll take that, right? And But that's what I do. That's, yeah. that's my job. My job is to help the customer. Right, I, I'm not going to make stuff up. That's 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 how I build a relationship. Not how I oh, do. That's that, that's true anywhere. I mean, even if you know you've got people who are massive, um, popular speakers or singers, but they always have a crew or staff that you know they need guidance where to go, where to be at a certain point, and the final, yeah, go out there and get them. You know, they just need that bump to get get them out there. Uh, and a lot of them who are famous are very shy in person. Well, yes. so they're not that the same. So they need to support people who they can trust, um, you know, and get the job done right. And uh, it's it's amazing. But there's a lot of people who just off stage are not 
you know, what they are on stage. Exactly. And everybody needs a support team. Everybody, you don't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself, right? And so it, it's great to see performers on stage when they take their bow, and then they turn around and say, please acknowledge the band, right? Please yeah. acknowledge the people behind the scenes, right? If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's right. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be there. Exactly. Right. So, so I know you're a public speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of a somewhat of a public speaker uh, in person, but also, you know, on this medium here, casual conversations. You like that name, by the way, casual yeah. conversations. My it's, name is it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, you know, when you go and speak in front of the public, which is basically to a larger group versus speaking to a client or a customer, how do you deal with that sort of anxiety before, you know, do you prepare in a certain way or just, you know, you have a, a delivery, you always do the same, what, what do you do? Oh, definitely prepare. You know what? If, and I tell people this all the time, especially if you're looking for work, if you think you're going to wing it, you're going to get your wings clipped, right? Because it doesn't work that way, right? You can't, it doesn't, like when you watch, you watch professional athletes, the reason they're professional athletes is because since the time they were three, they've been practicing and honing their craft, right? right. If, if it's baseball, they're practicing hitting, they're practicing pitching, they're practicing bunting, they're practicing fielding. So when they turn a double play in baseball and you're like, boy, that's amazing. Yeah, well, they've been doing it for a thousand times, right? They just yeah. practice and practice and practice. Same thing with public speaking. When I have to make a presentation, if it's an hour presentation, I'll spend at least 20 hours preparing for that presentation. I'll think about the word I want to use. If I have a slide presentation, I'll think about what at what point at the end of the slide, what word or sentence do I have to say to trigger to myself as a cue, this is my transition to the next slide, right? right. I don't have it written down anywhere, but it's in my brain. And it's only because I practiced it and I practiced it and I practiced it. And then I practiced it again, right? It's almost rote, but because I practice it so much, when I present, you can't tell. You don't know. I know, right? I know when I'm supposed to make the transition because I, I thought about it and I, I I just thought about it and I just thought about it and I just practiced. It's no different. It's no different. You got to practice and prepare and, and anticipate, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best. I tell people, if you have a one hour interview schedule for with a hiring manager, assume it's going to be cut short by a half an hour. If, yeah. you, if you have a half an hour with them, the sermon is going to be cut short by 15 minutes, right? Plan for the worst and hope for the best. Hope that it's a 30-minute conversation turns into an hour and a half. Hope for that, right? Well, Joey, you know, I, I don't want to reveal too many things, but, you know, before our interview, you know, we, we contacted uh, each other on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And, by the way, um, this is where we can contact. That's what he does. And... This is we contact Joey. Speaking of that, but you know, we we talked about it. I had you send me some notes. You know, read about you. I asked you. I have a couple of secret notes here. Things you know in there. So you know, it looks like a nice, easy, casual conversation. Also, working Streamyard software here. Where I'm making all the changes and switches like that. You know, so I have to look up at the camera there. I have to talk to Joey. I have to look if I'm going to put up a different graphic or a video. In this case, we don't have any, but we can. So, you know, I'm prepared. You know, it looks like I'm just here talking. Hey, let me just talk to Joey and let's have a good time. But, you know, there has to be a certain plan. Plus, while I'm doing that, I have to listen. Like if you're in front of a public audience, kind of gauge a reaction to, you know, what they're looking at. Are they laughing? Are they at the right times? Are they, you know, do they ask questions? Jump If you have questions you're offering, are they asking questions? So, it's a lot of prepared stuff and anything that I found across that looks like it's instant and just there on the spot has tons of preparation in there, at least an outline, like you said, so that when you go out there, you don't bomb. I mean, I, there was one presentation I was doing a little comedy thing I was trying out and I went to a person in the audience and I just asked them a question, which I thought would be an obvious answer. And they didn't give the right answer. And the second one didn't say anything. I'm like, how do I get out of this one? What would you do? Yeah, it's a challenge. It, it really is a challenge. And the only, the way to get out of that is to keep doing it, right? Yeah. And you, if you do it enough in time, you will amass a library of possible responses, right? Yeah. And that only comes from doing, right? You sure. can't, I, I, I can, I can teach you 
about public speaking till I'm blue in the face. I can give you a hundred books to read and 5,000 videos to watch until I pick you up and put you on a stage, right. put you in front of people and have you flub, right? It's going to be, you don't know, there's no other way around it, right? But that's the beauty of practicing and role playing, right? You do it in a non hostile, friendly environment. You hear what you're saying. If you're lucky enough, you have it recorded both yep. visually and audio, you know, using audio, and you can hear the words you're using. Some of the words make sense, some of them don't. You keep the ones that do, you get rid of the ones that don't, right? You role play. If you go looking for work, practice with somebody, practice with your friend. Have them ask you the questions that you think you're going to be asked. Have them listen to your answers, right? Do it in a non-threatening, friendly environment so that when you're in that environment, it's it's just natural. It rolls off your tongue, the answers, and, and you're not surprised. You're not taken aback. Uh, but you also have to, you know, accept the feedback you're going to get, yeah. you know, because if you're so self-absorbed in it, that's why I like recording yourself and but when you watch yourself you got to watch yourself as you don't know who this person is you right. can't go when it says oh i'm making a face i'm doing this because those are just visual things because when you're in front of a live audience you can do so many things you can get off that freaking stage and go after someone in the audience you can pull someone from the audience you have a distraction you can say hey joey well, what do you do like oh so you used to sell pools boy that you have to make a joke about pools or something you know if it's you know if it's pools and you're with people who do pool service or whatever, you got a perfect connection. You know, you could create some stories, jokes about them. So you have to do the research. You have to know who it is, what they do. So you have all this ammunition ready to go, you know, with them. But you also have to be sensitive to make sure you don't say a joke that's inappropriate and really take someone off. They'll never hire you again. They'll say, this guy's bad, you know, but, yeah. but you know, it's, it's reading the audience and, but you do have to have, when you go out there, you know, it's, I was at an event and I was giving a speech and I was doing a present, you know, recording it also. And at one point they called me. So right before that, I left the camera. I'm standing there and I'm basically like jumping up and down a little bit, like getting myself psyched up because when they introduce you, you've got this massive glow around you. So you, when you go out there, you have to have this energy with you. You can't go out there and say, oh, hi, I'm Kaz and nice to be here. It's great. Anybody having a good time? They're like, like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody got coffee? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like you you have to deliver. It, and you, I, when I do even, uh, you know, put people on camera when you record commercials, you know, I tell them if your comfort level is 100%, give me like 140 or so. Because then, and I don't, I have headsets, I don't, I said, I don't feel it. I'll be honest with them. It's like, look, I know how you feel, but I don't feel it. Do it again. And I'll play, I'll play back the first cut and the last cut. And they're like, who is this person who's like sleeping? I see what I mean. You know, it's painful for people to either hear that or to, to get them out of their comfort zone. But when they see themselves, they go, wow, I never knew I was that good. Like Joey, like, you know, I never, you know, we never saw you like in, the, in that format before. It looks like you're having a great time. That's why when I was with these people in these networking groups and they were down in the dumps, they were toxic tonings and, and Debbie, you know, Debbie Downers, I used to say to them, I said, if you walked into an interview, with this face and attitude that you have, there's no, I would never hire you, right? I wouldn't even want to talk to you, right? You, you can't, you can't walk in with your chin on your chest and your tail between your legs. You got to be chest out, chin up. You're here to save the day. You're, you should envision that halfway through that conversation in that job interview, that the hiring manager is actually going to say, hold on, Cass, pick up the phone. They call their admin and they say, all those people that were scheduled to come in later today and tomorrow, yep. cancel them. Our knight in shining armor is sitting right across the table from me. That's what you, as a job seeker, should be envisioning happening. If that's your vision, then before you get there, you have to do your homework. You've got to practice and you've got to prepare for that moment. It doesn't just happen. I'm telling you, it might. If it does, God bless you, right? That's a fluke. If it does, let me know. But I'm sure you have got to practice and prepare for what you think they're going to ask you, what you need to tell them, and what you can do for them, right? Because it's not about you. It's about them. And as long as you have that attitude, you're 90% there, right? To get you over the edge, stick out your chest, chin up, and say, I'm your knight in shining armor without saying it, but present it. 
Well, in, in a way, it's it's sort of, I hate the word performance, but you have to be somewhat of a performer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, exhibit yourself and your talents and your efforts, um, you know, and, and that's it. Although I don't think you should totally overdo it because sometimes that becomes a threat. The person's threatening, okay, this person's better than me, so if I hire them, they'll take my job. So, you know, you, you have to do that fine line. And I, I've seen those situations happen where, People apply, they're, all, they're great. They, they told me how wonderful I was and never heard back from them. And I said, well, did you say you can? I can do your job? I can. I know everything you know. You know, I'm like, well, how would you feel? Like, well, I guess I don't want to hire this person because they know more than me and I'm hiring them. And before I know it, people will see that they're better than me and, you know. Cash, you're absolutely right. And here's what I share with people. When you're looking for work, make sure somehow, some way, in that conversation, you say something to the effect, my job is to make your job easier. Yeah. That's different from I could do your job, right? right? My job, Mr. and Mrs. Hiring Manager, is to make your job easier. That's why you're hiring me, right? Because I've been there, I can do that. I did it over there, I can do it over here. When would you like me to start? I wouldn't maybe say it that way, or maybe I would, depending on the conversation, depending on the person. But your job as an employee, is to make your employer's job easier. No one, I don't think, would would be a, would be intimidated by that. I don't think. I hope not. If so, <laughs> you have the wrong information. <laughs> Key takeaway time. Key takeaway yeah. time. So again, when you're selling, I don't know if I said this enough. It's not about you. It's about them. The spotlight should be on them, right? Whether it's your client or your hiring manager, whoever the case may be, it doesn't matter. And again, you know, going back to. Uh, Dale Carnegie years ago wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is not mine. This is his. Be interested first, then be interesting. You've got to be genuinely, authentically concerned about the person you're talking to. And you do that by asking questions and shutting up and listening. You know, one of the things that they taught us in sales was that when you want to make a point and you want to hear what people have to say, you literally have to put your teeth together, right? And you keep your teeth together while the person's speaking. And they go, why would you do that? Because if your teeth are together, you can't speak, right? So gives the other person a chance to talk to you about what's on their plate and what's what's holding them back and, and how you can help them. Then you can be interesting. Then you can start talking about yourself. But again, it's all about them. It's not about you. And that's the irony of selling yourself. Wow, Joey. You've been a great interview. We did an interview prior to this, another time, in another millennium. No, recently. <laughs> <laughs> it was about uh, happy, how to improve your life on a daily basis, monthly basis, or career basis. And it's really interesting. We'll have the link below um, this video. You can go in any time and watch that. And please share it and contact Joey at LinkedIn directly, and he'll contact you back or his phone number is there, everything. You can actually call him and uh, he might talk to you, right? You have time to talk to people these days? Always, definitely. Most <laughs> Always. Always. So, Joey, final question. I might have asked you this uh, before, but uh, this casual conversation, uh, how would you describe it to you? How would I describe this casual conversation? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity to share thoughts and ideas. That's how I would describe it. It's an opportunity to, short of, Sending out a text or writing an email is actually and it's actually being face to face in the same room is being having the opportunity to share thoughts and ideas and helping people understand that there's always something else to learn. There's always something else to understand. Uh, I learned every time I learn something new how much I don't know, right? And so I, I, I make I make a conscious effort of paying attention. I ask a lot of questions. Sometimes it sounds like an interrogation, and I apologize to everybody who's been on that end. Uh, and I've gotten that a lot. I just, I want to know. I want to ask. I don't want to assume. I got to ask. I want to know what you're about, what you're trying to accomplish. And I, I won't know that until I become clairvoyant, which I'm not. So I <laughs> you know what I sometimes say? He says, You don't know what you really don't know. You know, like, uh, but after this episode, you know a little bit less because you know more. If you can understand what you said. <laughs> Replay it and listen to it again because I think in the end it makes sense. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so thank you again, Joey, for being a great guest on Casual Conversations. And as always, keep having those casual conversations, sharing with everybody else. Tell the whole world about this great conversation you had. We had. I think it was great, and I hope everybody at home 
wherever they are these days, on a tablet, on a phone, at home, anywhere in the world, watching this, uh, share it and enjoy. And any final words? Uh, be positive. Take care of the people around you. And, and just, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. As bad as it is, it could be worse. Just <laughs> go with the flow, right? It just, just be positive. Positive beats negative every day. Really does. As a famous song once said, don't worry, be happy. Be happy. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Bye.